What is going on YouTube? Charles Bonston here. We uh, actually produced a video, looked at it, noticed that it was actually skipping. So we're going to be doing a, another video. Uh, the other one was actually fire. So um, I shot that video, then went fi um, YouTube live for BPI, which is my company. And now I'm going to be redoing this thing. So it's been literally almost an hour of talking. Uh, I'm getting into that point where Charles is a little bit hungry, but I do want to produce that out. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually filming a video even though someone's coming in right now. Thanks a lot. Not live or anything. <laughs> You're the man. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So I would say one of the biggest things that um, you're looking at is when you're talking about why it's the easiest time today, you have to think about, you know, I, I talk about all the time, gratitude and perspective and things about, you know, what did you have? Easiest way to look at perspective is that you lived it. You know, the perspective before the internet, the perspective before you actually had cell phones, the perspective before you were in a relationship or you had kids or a house or, you know, you had money or something like, because you knew what it was like, you lived it, you were there. You, you experienced it before something, okay? The perspective, say, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, a million years ago, you have no idea unless you actually see something that's really, really taking hold of it. Say you see it on the History Channel and you're like, oh my gosh, that's really what it was like? That's really what World War I was like? Or that's really how the Aborigines back in Africa where we all started, that's how it was like? Wow, that's incredible. And then even before that, when we were chimpanzees, before that, when we were single cell organisms, and then you start saying, we came from the cosmos. You know, if you really dial it back, you just start saying, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm not the end of the, uh, the Big Bang. I am part of the Big Bang. And that, that revolutionary thought really just, and the reason I say this is because a lot of people put themselves because they don't believe in a God or they, because they don't believe in a source power, or because they don't believe in something is they put themselves as the center of the universe, which is the biggest mistake that you can do. Because if you're the center of the universe, everything revolves around you. And I'm not talking about egotistical, obviously, yes. But if everything revolves around the, you, a lot of people feel that things should be given to them. Okay, so in other words, things should be given to them. Their, their, their meaning should be given to them. The meaning of, say, their job or money or relationships should be given to them. The meaning of their, um, their existence or their, their passion or their desires are on the outside and it should be given to them. When you actually look at something else and you say, if it's not me and I'm here and I'm just a soldier and I'm just here supposed to be doing something uh, because I feel called to do it, that's the meaning, that's the passion. You know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jeff Bezos just came out with a video and he said, I, had a, I have a calling for space exploration. And he said it started at 10 and Amazon's gonna get me there to do that. It's the same thing with Musk, is they have a calling to not be a single planetary species, is that we're gonna be among the cosmos and think about, oh my God, I remember when Earth was like this. I remember when we couldn't even get to Mars and now it's just super easy or it only takes, it took one time three months. The same thing of going out to California when you were in New York, it took three months. Then the railroad came, then it took only about a week, two weeks to get out there. Now you could fly there in six hours. Six hours, three months, and imagine that. It takes three months to actually get out to Mars. Um, I think that's roughly the time frame that, that Musk is saying. And obviously it would probably take longer in the future when we actually do it the first time, but obviously that's the first time, that's the first technology, then we're gonna get better, more efficient, things like that. What am I getting at? Is that number one, you are not the center of the universe because if you are, then your ego is gonna get in the way of your fear, your desires. Um, it, it's really gonna amplify the, the anxiety that you have, the, the, all the things that come up in your brain. You say, could I do this? Should I not do this? Because if, when you put it in perspective and you say, I need to make sales calls. Well, okay, what did guys have to do say 100 years ago? Let's just put it in perspective for a second. Guys, then we'll talk about the ladies. Guys, 100 years ago, you're probably gonna be in a factory you're coming out of World War I or going into World War II. I apologize that I don't have the exact dates. Um, maybe you are in an extremely dangerous job because you live in New York City or if you're out in the wilderness, you know, this is very extremely dangerous because you're farming, you're harvesting, you're trying to provide for your family. You have a lot of disease. You don't have the fresh water. You don't have the fresh food that you can go out to the marketplace. Nothing is getting delivered. And you have to think about the, the anxiety that a, that a father had, which was, 
I'm providing for the family, I have to stay alive at my job, which is either steel making, which is either in a factory where there's smoke, you're either a cop, there's disease everywhere, there's crime everywhere, there's prostitution, uh, there's gambling, there's, there's just, uh, th there's a lot going on. As a woman, you, you pretty much grew up in, in the same community. You didn't really leave. There was no opportunity for jobs unless you're in entertainment, including uh, your writing, you're uh, either on Broadway, you're in Hollywood, well, not really Hollywood, but you know, you're in showbiz. And it was really tough to actually get out of that. Yes, there was some you know, upward trajectory for women and within jobs, but you have to put that in perspective. That was only 100 years ago. If you go 200 years ago, you're probably becoming a soldier coming out of war, going into war. As a woman, you're hopefully having at least eight or nine kids, and a lot of them were actually dying. And why am I actually saying this? Because this is the perspective when you get a little tired, or that you're a little hungover, or you don't wanna make that sales call, or you don't wanna to go to the gym, or you don't wanna do something. Listen, I'm telling you right now, when people talk about they don't have time, there's tons of people around here that are just gonna sit on their computers all fucking day, and they're not going to do anything. They're not actually advancing themselves. They're not actually adding to the community. They're not. They're providing, providing for the family because they're bringing home a paycheck. In other words, back in the day, we had to do the things we needed to do. Now we outsource it through money. I'm hungry, someone else makes it. I'm thirsty, someone else brings it to me. Uh, I need something renovated in my house. I pay for someone to do that. Just think about how easy it is today compared to what it was. So if it's really easy for you to be alive, safe, healthy, and have an upward trajectory, so long as you're in the United States or you know, at least a first world country, you have to look at the business sense. The business sense is, that's I, I'm literally running a brokerage with millions of dollars in listings right now where all of them came to me not because of the brokerage I was at, they came to me because of me. So you just have to look at yourself and say, how can I improve? What's the accountability I can bring to the community? And that's why Jordan Peterson literally starts with, clean your room, start with your room, start with your house. Then go to, maybe if you wanna tiptoe outside of that, you start go, getting into a relationship, how am I gonna add value to this relationship? Okay, if I add value to myself, the relationship, how am I gonna add value to myself, the relationship, and the kid? Okay, now it's myself, the relationship, the kid, and the community, okay? Most people wanna literally go from themselves to the community. Where, what about yourself? You know, the, the, the gratitude that I have is the ability to give you guys some knowledge and also receive back the knowledge. I also have the, the perspective that the way it is right now is super fucking easy. It's super easy. I have this argument with my brother all the time. My brother's like, well, I work all these long hours. Name a time where someone didn't work long hours because if they weren't working long hours at their job, they would then come home, they would have to cook, clean, take care of the kids, feed the kids, put them in bed, wake up, and do it all over again. Now, there's escapism. There's Netflix, there's YouTube, there's your cell phone, social media, email. You, you, know, you could FaceTime your parents. You could, you could call your parents. You could text your parents. Back in the day, you'd have to visit your parents. You'd have to go to your parents. The, the form of communication is totally different. So really what I'm saying is, being alive today is, is such a blessing. And I really hope that you, you actually internalize that and you don't put yourself as the center of the universe because when you put yourself at the center of the universe, it's all about me. What am I gonna take? What am I gonna get? And I'll, and I'll just leave you with this, which is I was out with um, this one girl uh, about a month ago and we went out like five or six times. At no point was she really grateful for the, the things that I was doing. And it was one of those things that that's who she is. You know, she expects things to be either given to her because she's, she's either, you know, always had it that way. Maybe she grew up in a very affluent household, which I think she did. And I started thinking about it. I'm like, that's not my type. That's not my type. You know, I brought her out, you know, conjured things. You know, she would come over. I had food there. She ate the food. I had the alcohol. In. You know, it's like one of those things like, okay. And I'm not just saying that, but it was a good example of the people that are walking around right now and just saying, you know, I was also talking with this, this business owner uh, about two weeks ago, and they were talking about the loyalty program that they had. And the loyalty program, she's like, yeah, you know, there's times that they've reached the loyalty program, but I don't tell them. I'm like, why don't you tell them? She goes, well, because it, it cost me money. That's scarcity mindset. That's not abundant mindset. And you can actually see it. You can see it on the person that they were stressed out, that they, they didn't know what to do when it came down to tough problems. There is no perspective. There's no gratitude that you literally are providing a service for people, healthy food, things like that. And it was, it was just, it, it, you know, I'm, am I gonna call her out? No. Am I gonna maybe just like every once in a while be like, oh, you should probably say something to that person that, because think about it. If someone gets a free bowl, you know, 
you know, I won't talk about what it was, but a free, say free salad. They get the free salad, then they post it on social media, then they talk about it, then they come back for more. That's the abundant mindset, is that that's not gonna put you out of business. And if you think that one, giving that one salad is gonna put you out of, out of business, that's just not good business sense. I know I was all over the place, and I know there's no context to this conversation. It's more of just a, a communication and a talk and a discussion with you guys about, uh, you know, kind of what I'm thinking day to day. Just, it's, it, this is the, the, the drip in my body, which is essentially, you know, gratitude and uh, just, just things that are only gonna go right if you put something else as the center. It could be your kids, it could be your job, it could be your calling, it could be your passion. This is my passion, this is my calling. Um, I'm just a, a, you know, a soldier for it. Jordan Peterson is a perfect example. He doesn't really have much of an ego, he has the confidence, but he notices that there's something that's necessary in the world, so he's just giving it. He's the, the orator for it. For all the knowledge that he's consumed, he's now just providing all of that value back to the community, which is, he's, he's rightfully doing it correctly. You know, he's, he's level tempered, he's, he's just really good at what he does. So, just be grateful. Just be grateful. Just know that you're, you're here. It's a blessing that there's way harder back in the day. Um, and I'll just leave you with this is that if you go really back to the millennial when we, millennium, a million years ago, we were just plains of Af Africa. It was literally to the core. The two cores, why we're here, survival and replication. And then from there, everything sprouts. Survival is going to war, tribal warfare. Um, ensuring that we have the, the right territory, ensuring that if, some, if something comes to attack us, that we're able to protect ourselves. And then replication, which is essentially getting out there and ensuring that we provide value to the community, we rise up as leaders because we wanna be, we wanna have the best mate, we wanna go for the healthiest mate, we wanna be in the best physical shape, that's what a woman looks. It's all, it's all ancestral, it's all inside, all right? So have an awesome day, talk to you guys soon. Hopefully this video came out a little bit better than the last one.